This is Brian Caron with uh, Cycron News. I'm here with a congressional candidate and Cypress College professor, Peter Matthews. Mr. Matthews, how are you today? Pretty good, thank you, Brian. How are you doing? <laughs> Pretty good. Um, it's about 11 o'clock right now, and the yeah. results are uh, Richardson has about 9,000 votes. You so have, far. Mm -hmm. yeah, part of the pre uh, most of the precincts are counted. Mm -hmm. And she has 9,000. We have uh, 900, I think, right now. And then uh, Orpeza has 7,000 something. And McDonald had 2,000 or something like that. So we came in fourth among all the. Uh, how many Democrats were there? 11 Democrats? 11 Democrats. We came in fourth out of 11, yeah, this time. So far, so far. And I'm pretty sure it's going to end that way, probably. You received uh, 9,025 votes when I looked in the records in last election. Yeah. How come such a drop off from the last election in this and now this election? Uh, well, one of the things is that we only had uh, two mailings that we were able to afford, and we l we've made some phone calls and found that um, in some areas about half, more than half our mailings are missing. Uh, voters didn't get them, so we're following up on that to see what happened at the post office. This happened a couple of other elections also, where postal log records are missing part of our mailing. But the main reason is probably because the other two had the organizations behind them after raising huge amounts of money. Uh, many organizations like the unions joined them and the Democratic Party and, uh, joined them, although had the Progressive Democratic uh, uh, vote, PDA endorsement. Uh, the main party endorsed uh, Oropesa and the organizational strength of that, mainly based on money. Half a million dollars was spent on Oropesa's campaign and uh, Richardson's was about 200000 or close to that, I think, altogether with the money that she lent her campaign. When you have that kind of money, a lot of organizations just start rolling towards you and that's hard to beat. I know you've been really big about the money in this campaign. Yeah. Do you believe that basically Oropesa and Richardson have bought this election? <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily put it in directly in those terms, but it's very close to that, yeah. And it's not just those two, but other politicians in our system have, who raised huge amounts of money from corporate interests mainly and lobbyists are the ones who owe those lobbyists something once they get elected. So while they win the election, they win the election in quote, the people of America quite often lose because we don't get health care for all. We don't get schools that are adequate for everyone because now we have schools that are rich and some that are poor in terms of the students' uh, um, opportunities. And the people of America lose even though people like Orpesa and Richardson win. And they'll say nice things and they'll probably try to mean it. They probably do mean it. They really want to help the American people. But once they're elected, their hands are tied in terms of how they could really help the people. Blue dogs! You know, no, 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 no. these people, okay, you know, I mentioned this to Peter a long time ago. The reason I didn't vote for Oro Pisa was because I got the mailer from Oro Pisa that talked about the Iraq war, and it says we need to move direction. Okay? <laughs> and I've heard those words so, before. Yeah. You know, and it's usually, it's the same kind of boilerplate crap that yeah. just makes you think, these guys aren't going to do anything different. They can't vote to close corporate tax loopholes and bring in the, the hundreds of millions of dollars that are needed for textbooks. They can't vote to close corporate loopholes and bring in the billions of dollars needed to lower our college tuitions. They can't vote to close corporate tax loopholes and bring in the money needed for, to fix our roads or build new classrooms to reduce classroom size. They really won't be able to do this. kind. Of, they can't vote that way when they're in Congress. So voting patterns are very indicative of where, quite often indicative of where um, legislators get their money from. Imagine if I'd had $500,000 to match or pays us $500,000 that was spent on her campaign. You think I would have gotten 1,000 votes? By the way, we, I think we raised about maybe 20,000 or so, and we um, borrowed, I borrowed, I borrowed uh, about another 30, 20 or 30,000. So I think we may have only spent about $40,000 at the very most, and not even that compared to 500,000 and about 200,000, those two leading candidates spent. It's all, but it's about the money, unfortunately. So. In your future endeavors, are you going to work to try to change this um, definitely, money? Definitely, definitely. Well, I'm working with PDA to set up a local chapter of Progressive Democrats of America here in Long Beach and expand that chapter and keep it as a, get it moving as a social movement for progressive issues such as clean money. And I would work to get the clean money bills through Congress by getting the PDA and others involved in talking to the members of Congress to vote for it. So I'll work for that. I'll work for single-payer health care from outside the system, outside the Congress. I won't be in Congress, but 
working on a grassroots level with PDA to get members of Congress to vote for single-payer health care that will cover everyone, and also to close corporate tax loopholes and bring money in for schools and to lower our tuition, to lower our tuition and uh, give textbook subsidies, and also have K-12 through class sizes smaller and equally funded. Those kinds of progressive issues, clean environment, I'll be working outside of Congress with the grassroots organization PDA and local chapter here for the next few months and maybe even years. I'd also like to write a book that I've been considering and starting. I already wrote the outline for it and the introduction to it. And the book's um, already been registered with the Copyright Office, and I've got a couple of publishers interested in it. And the title of the book is Dollar Democracy uh, with Liberty and Justice for Some. And the subtitle is How to Win Back the American Dream for All. And what this book will do is to analyze voting patterns in Congress to see who's taking what money from whom and how are they voting on bills. And do those votes translate into good public policy or not? Or do those votes translate into an inadequate education, inadequate health care, uh, dirty environment? And then I'm also going to look at case studies of Americans that have been affected by these kinds of votes and the lack of health care. So someone without big money really ha practically can't win in this country, in this system. Uh, of American politics right now. If you don't have much big money and big money support, it's virtually impossible to win any kind of high-level office such as State Assembly or State Senate or U.S. House of Representatives. You can probably win a city council seat. That's about it. You know. But anyway, I'm not bitter at all about this. I think it's room for optimism to try to move on to the next level and help to get the changes made outside of Congress and also from outside of Congress to Congress. We never keep up because perseverance is the best we have. And Peter, you have that. Congratulations for that. Never give up. Thank you. You're You're optimism. Inspiration. Besides that, you know, this two short term, Peter, uh -huh. we deserve a long term. Yeah. <laughs>